welcome you all back to this show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. We're broadcasting here from the opposite ends of the world with you, Jay Fidel, back in Honolulu, Hawaii, around 11 a.m. in the morning, and me, Martin Despang, being 12 hours ahead here near Munich, Germany, at uh, 11 p.m. ish. Welcome back, Jay. Nice to be here, Martin. Yeah, likewise. So wouldn't we always like to talk about good things only? I mean, ideally speaking. Absolutely. I agree with you. But, you know, the problem these days is there's so many troubling things happening that it's hard to wake up in the morning and say, oh, wow, this is a great day. The only thing we can speak of is the weather. Thank goodness for that. Yeah. And so the, the show quote here, I agree. I mean, sadly or tragically, because even in, in shows where we really try to get out of trouble and out of problems, we have this one that we spoil ourselves. Whenever we get stuck in architecture, we do mobile and immobilia. Immobilia is that French word for real estate, which sounds much less poetic, right? than it does in this French and we Germans adopted that. So we compare cars to architecture and that's a lot of fun. But even in these shows or even ones about beautiful architecture as, as Harbor Square in Honolulu, that brings back memory, right? Jay, you had just been coming here and then that project was built and it was the first in downtown that we now called multiple, they called it multiple use, now it's mixed use. So it's people live in downtown, people, there was a restaurant, you can tell me, you remember, I, I don't, Ron Lindgren told me that, the fancy, famous restaurant at the floor and shops and stuff like that. And so these these were the days, but we have to chip in, like it or not, uh, ever since Kurt Sandburn is not doing anymore, we got to chip in this stuff that's going up, unfortunately, as here, this Victoria place, um, which is on the ward um, property there by Howard Hughes. And we ended last time, Jay, on uh, being sentimental, romantic, nostalgic about these good old days from when you came, around when you came. And Steve Au is one of the masters. If you want to know more about him, there is this fantastic interview that Bandit uh, Kanikakon did shortly before Steve left us. It's the, the, the link is down there in the Tropic Hearing website. And the show quote at the bottom uh, right, if I... Um, move me over away from it. He awards Wonder World. That makes you really, really almost cry because it, it shows you how Kaka'ako should have been, could have been, if you would have let Steve Au uh, together with um, um, Richard Lowe, who had, we, we had on many shows as well, basically do their job. So what there was on the side of the project that we had to introduce that Howard Hughes is doing, we call that the, the coconut brine. So the coconut brine, if anyone doesn't know, is this fictional, silly thing that makes no sense because in Hawaii, nor climatically or culturally, there's any reason to cover up the breasts of women. It's a fictional fetish of some Howley guys from all over the world and, and this is unfortunately how we categorize this architecture with these whimsical, you know, wavy lanai's that are not lanai's. It just tries to come across as something breezy, but it's actually not, as we, you know, pointed out in the, in the last show. This building here is from 1969, three years after you, no, five years after you came to the islands, Jay, and it, it was built. And uh, Howard Hughes just basically, uh, dynamited or you know bulldozed it away you see cute little you have a show the first show we're gonna uh, promote that right in two hours it's wait wait martin first. howard hughes was not on the scene in that time no this no, was no, Vic they were victoria not. ward owned that exactly. property. howard hughes did not you know buy it out until much later that's that, exactly that's what richard lowe tells in his show on the last slide what wonder world exactly and you see cute little JFK looking the Soto Brown at the bottom right. We're going to promote his show, right? You're going to have the first show with him that is his own show. He's going to stay with us every other week. But in two hours, you have the first show. So we cheerlead you on that one. So these were the days that we kind of get 
kind of romantic about or sentimental or nostalgic about. I want to share with you here a photographer artist, Shirley Lamb, who uh, on her website, you see the it's quoted there at the bottom right. She used this, uh, this creature, this cat, in making a pitch for how great that building was. And she was documenting the building before it got torn down. Here's Shirley. And I got this through Bundit. Uh, thank you both for that. And she also, which you see here, if I move me over again, uh, when it was basically taken down. And my favorite show of the Sotos is show quoted up there, the evolution of Kaka'ako's tradition. So these buildings were really quite sophisticated. From Victoria Ward Estate, a kind of a Kevin Lynchy uh, development of, of, of towers, objects in the park. And the materiality, Jay, um, was, yes, concrete. Concrete is nothing that is indigenous to Hawaii. But three of the four ingredients of concrete, which is water, aggregates, and sand, can and actually should be from here because they take the basalt and, and grind it down. Great Pacific Rocky Mountain Precast is doing this right now as we're speaking and all the time out there in Campbell Industrial Park. And uh, then they take the aggregates and you get this, which we called Vulcrete. It's our, you know, Lewis carroll -y name for volcanic concrete because it's something that's specific to us and only the cement we need to import, and that's something the industry needs to work on to replacing that with lime, and, and there's other research going on. So in, in a way, it is as DeSoto's, one of DeSoto's favorite, you know, shows evolution of islands, tradition of innovation. This is post-contact. This is some cool stuff, literally and figuratively speaking. So- Before you go uh, too, that, far, too far uh, forward, Martin, can we talk for a minute about Ward Plaza? It was oh, yeah, a very, a very interesting design. And at the yeah. corner of Ward Avenue, and uh, I guess it was uh, Ala Moana. Um, yeah. And uh, it was, um, in my view, I liked the building. I, I liked the building because of the lines. Um, and uh, I recall that there were open spaces uh, I recall that the access to the the offices and internal spaces were on the outside. Not the there were no inside hallways, as I remember. Um, and it was a uh, it was always a positive experience to go there because of those open spaces. Um, it was modern, and yet it was also a Hawaii style building, in my view. Um, and I liked it. I always liked it. And I and I'm I don't know if it was well managed. I suspect it was not well managed. It could have been managed better. Um, and I was I was sorry to see it go. Um, but I, I'm really interested in your thoughts from an architectural criticism point of view. What what did you think of the design of, of that project? So I want to right away appoint you to be the next dean of architecture based upon what you just said. <laughs> I I'm I'm not trying to suck up, but this is this is this is the perfect spot on characterization of what Ward Warehouse basically was. I ask myself, why aren't there more informed citizens? As you say, you know, you are not trained as an architect. You came here because of the Navy, and then you went into law and having your law firm. So why aren't all the others? So I'm returning the ball, as you can tell. Uh, why are why isn't everyone else as informed as you? No, yeah, well, I guess the other question is why isn't everybody as handsome as me? Um, and I'm excluding you from that exclusion. Um, but let me let me say that uh, I, I agree with you. Um, people think uh, have thought over these years that the architecture was uh, it was it had a life of its own. It was inevitable. It was inexorable. Uh, it came from, it was like cargo cult, you know? It, it came from the design community and there was little or nothing you could do about it. The only people who could do anything about it were the developers uh, and the capital concentrations. We talked about that. Um, and, and people, even including the architects, really didn't stand up to it, including the AI, what do you call it? The AI? AI, 
AIA. AIA the didn't American stand Institute up to it. Yeah. I think one of the one of the sad features about Kaka'ako was that although there were a handful of architects that stood up against what was going to happen in in uh, Kaka'ako, and that certainly does include the Howard Hughes Corporation and others, um, they they actually did not mm, have any effect. It was the yeah. capital that had the effect. And yeah. and uh, your point your point is very well taken. That over the years since statehood. We have essentially demolished um, the character of local culture, local building, local design and architecture. And, and we've done that for filthy lucre. Yeah, and replaced it by exchangeable, uh, you know, uh, international style architecture that then, which makes it worse, pretends to be Hawaiian by either name dropping of some Hawaiian names or throwing some coconut bra on. That makes it actually even worse. That being said, um, let's make it worse here and go to this one here. But this is bringing up the spirit back up. We're at the point, we, we reached a low point. We're going back up to your audience. So uh, be, be more optimistic from now on because this is what, um, there's hope. So the other project, that um, actually now the Victoria Place Tower is on was the other one by Steve Au that is even more famous, and that was Ward Warehouse. And Ward Warehouse um, has been torn down as well. And um, before, the other one got torn down. But here is from the emerging generation, uh, two signs of hope. One is uh, Sammy here, who you met when he was with us, our second uh, youngest son. And he went to... Pataloha, which is, uh, you know, Patagonia, um, you know, being showing a special interest in Hawaii and branding him itself differently. And in their store design, the, the backdrop is made from the log timbers of the Ward warehouse and Patagonia itself lives, uh, resides, uh, has a store in a repurposed old building. So that's a sign of hope. There's a corporation. It's a large company which actually has some ethics, you know, it still has to be run, you know, profitable on all this stuff. And the other one is my dear son, Joey, my oldest one, who you might remember from a while ago, who ended up being currently um, uh, operational manager for IKEA Europe. And when the Russian market, um, uh, luckily, we have to say, we have to give them because only 8% of German firms pulled out of the Russian market after Putin invaded the Ukraine. IKEA obviously being Swedish, but their German operation was in charge of that Eastern market and they took it down. And Joey, you know, was swamped with that work, but he liked it. And then there were 30,000 stuffed dinosaurs that were supposed to be shredded, thrown on the, on the, on the landfill because they didn't have a EU certificate. And he fought for, I'm very proud of him, Joey, that Ukrainian kids were given them. And he went further and that got him in big trouble with capital concentration within the company, your term, because he wanted some other furniture that was just as good as they sell it here, but it didn't have that certificate either. And he fought hard for that there is some sort of discount areas in the stores, stores that wanted to participate. Did that make him popular um, in, within the company? No, because the people in charge of the new stuff were saying, you are competing against us, right? So it's really hard, uh, but, but worth it to fight against capital concentration in, in, in any kind of these fields. So a long time ago, Jay, we were stepping up and we felt bad because that was before Ward Plaza even came down. And we thought, who are we to even say what if it has to go down, which we knew it would, and how one would replace it with something that is out of Volcrete and out of timber. And I had the great chance for that reason to meet the legendary Alfred Yi, um, who is our magic master and uh, structural engineer. And I was there, you know, very nervous and, and got a crit from him and, um, and he basically said, Martin, structurally, I don't even want to talk about it. This is like peanuts. But I want to talk about it because this building is alive, it lives, and it reminds me of Queen Emma Gardens. And he went on and on and on. And I will never forget that because soon after that, he left us, at least on Earth. 
So now, years later, I feel a little less bad with these show quotes here, what we were proposing, because Primitiva 1 is a living organism more and much more than Howard uses towers, even the most ambitious one. This is Jeannie Gangs, and again, yes, we might be called chauvinist and sexist because she's one of the few women out there in the fields and we're two bald guys. Who are we to say? But we say, Jeannie, you can do better. You do probably the best of the Howard Hughes Towers, but you have to do much better because De Soto said if she uses Kuula, this is basically sugarcane, and sugarcane, De Soto said, is per se uh, a cash crop, capital concentration in the field of plants, right? Maybe this is the wrong metaphor to begin with. And then making something look like a plant and not perform like a plant does not make it any better. And so it is with the building, Jay, we were talking about last week because we were saving this for now, because that name they gave it, Launiu, is, as this dictionary up there says, is Hawaiian for coconut leaf. So once again, they try to brand, if I move uh, me out a little bit of this text here, is designed by that architectonica, that troubled tropics, uh, Miami, Florida firm. Um, the announcement noted adding that inspiration comes from coconut grove and swaying fronds that grace the original Ward family home. Once again, Victoria would likely turn around in her grave because when you hear Richard Lowe in Ward's Wonder World, he praises her what a sophisticated person she was. So guys, stop that, taking advantage. And now we go back to Semi and up there at the top left is when you met him at the second to last Christmas party. And, and as we were sharing before, but we do again in more detail here because it makes it even more important. He went to Kalaheo High School in Kailua and they were the first one to build a holly. And he was part of that. And he dragged me into that. So here are these people who operate these fish ponds um, in Kaneohe and they hauled in uh, the, the palm leaves and, you know, they let them dry with us and then they showed us how to cut them and then, oops, one too far, and then they showed us how to finally um, um, uh, latch uh, them as a thatched and using the beauty of their shape, their V-shape. So if you if you use them the right way, not the wrong way, they're like little gutters naturally. And so we were all very, you know, excited and listen. This is all about listening and learning. And we shared that with multiple generations. And just the fact, Jay, in all honesty, when at my school, everyone talks about all oh, the Hawaiian sense of place and blah, blah, blah. I was always like, OK, leave us alone, because this is not relevant to the problems we have of these days. But this taught me, yes, it has, because this effect of doing something, creating something together. So while you might not be able to 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 um, sort of translate this literally, but figuratively, the effect of not, you were talking about the unions, right? Outsourcing it to contractors that rip you off, but doing something together as a co-op, which is a big trend in Europe that we will hear about in the next coming shows, was a big, big learning curve. And it basically left us with uh, the lust uh, 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 for how can we apply that philosophy, that mentality of the indigenous to today's practice? And that was, we talked about it even when Kaka'ako doesn't just have the Mauka Howard Hughes and Kamehameha because you had another show, rightly so, about the other, the Makai. And we refer to that. How should one build there? Should one build there at all? And I'm sure this is an ongoing process that we you will continue. So that was our contribution to say, rather than in the show quote at the top right having WCIT coming up with uh, these sort of, you know, Polynesian pop roofs as a decor right after they tore them down at the international marketplace the original and turning it into mall and having it blessed to wine give us a break right <laughs> let's go let's be serious let's go let's leave surface let's go to substance let's go back to substance how does that sound to you jay yeah well, um, I I can recall when there were um, a number of 
thatched buildings along the waterfront uh, on the south on the south coast of Oahu, and I I thought they were charming, um, and some of them were museum, you know, but uh, you know they were open to the public, and it was great to have them there for one reason or another, whatever the reason. And yeah. they're they're all gone now. So when you show pictures um, of these thatched buildings, I say to myself, hmm, "I wish we could have more. I wish we could yeah. revisit that time." And and when you talk about uh, you know Native Hawaiians indigenous housing, um, th there's no way you could get a building permit right for a thatched a thatched um, structure so that people could live in it. And that's also too bad. Exactly. Just my thought. Kalahea was actually uh, somehow so smart. They were the first one doing that with a Department of Education. And they were getting around having that to Sprinkler, which is kind of, you know, ironic. <laughs> and and then the, the 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 new one next to the mission houses there uh, in the in the Civic Center district is actually fake. This is actually a uh, petroleum based uh, fake plastic. Uh, thatching, which is also pretty pretty sad, right? But on a good note, this is you know these all these old fart firms, uh, architectural firms should retire and the new generation take over as a revolution. This is here at the end of the last semester at the School of Architecture. These are the doctoral projects, and several of them. Bundet had talking AIA. Uh, Bundet, thank you, is shaking up the AIA office in downtown and had an exhibit about homegrown and one of his students Jacob Bowles was introducing hemp and bamboo and mixing them into a composite of course only for single story buildings Kendall Leonard that I had the privilege to work with was taking the stupid and silly Ke Kilohana wannabe affordable Howard Hughes high rise and stripping it from its uh, mumu skin and replacing it with uh, some really cool Uh, fishing um, um, uh, facade, um, fishy fishing facade, which sounds crazy, but go back to a couple of shows. This is one of them. And many more projects. And this is really hopeful to see. And, you know, when people say we doubt this, it doesn't work. Um, there is Socrates Pratakos, our assistant fire chief of the Honolulu Fire Department. He's always for things. This was him advising Nick Civitano of a sort of reintroducing the uh, the A-frame, the Holly, which is an archetype all over the world out of a very sophisticated uh, cross-nailed timber system and thermally modified wood so many years ago. The building upon that, this was um, Kelly Keanu, who was building out of coconut lumber. And we did, a, we did two shows where we had him speak about it. And I still have so many people watching that show and reaching out to us and saying, hey, we want to talk to the guy. You know, this is genius. He took, you know, one of his jobs he had, he flew over to this company back. I connected him to who did do friction welding dowels out of wood. There's so much of this exciting stuff out there. And this is most recently, Jay, this is Rana Kiesling here, who I had the privilege to work with him on his thesis here. And this is this is this is this is affordable wooden solid timber housing that he applied guess where best to Lahaina and this is all pretty much figured out I'm sitting the one the first show we did after the um the revamping or the transition as you called it here from to your Nuano studio we, we see we saw the wood the real wood background the, if you go back to that show even it's YouTube like that so I'm sitting in something like that so I know pretty much it works And if you still have doubts, um, there's so much potential. There's so much creative potential on the island. Um, this is at the top left is uh, is Despeng Architect some two decades ago, building um, four story high um, with firmly modified timber, at least as a, as a screen. At the bottom there at the left, you see the Soto Brown. Um, doing research and interviewing Tadpole Studio, which is Bandit Kandikakon and Janice Lee. They built the Haoli lofts in the Moli'ile area. If you haven't seen this building, this is the best of new architecture that there is. And it builds, it just reconnects to the good old days. But none of us, sorry, Bandit, myself either, we're in the same boat, will ever achieve what the young man, Martin Ansolini from Colombia, that you know well, 
And you, the audience, up there is the show quotes of the shows we did with him. And we also did one more recently, one at the bottom there, which was called uh, Freescaping. What you see at the bottom right is something that he achieved that, uh, that children all over the world are playing in a dollhouse sold by Target that is themed after the movie that he consulted as an architect, which won an Oscar for that reason, which is called Encanto. It's a Disney and it's an animated movie. And he did it for his daughters who are with him uh, right now that we're speaking. So they will not look at Colombia as their home culture as most people look at it as in drugs and war and in misery. That it is a country that is as beautiful, you know, geographically and climatically as we are in Hawaii. And it's a very proud culture. So please, you clients out there, this is the man for you. This man won an Oscar. So you want to reach out to him to build your buildings with them. And if this is not enough, uh, one more uh, into the future of the next show, Jay, because you know we have to look outside of our too often too uh, limited horizon of our archipelago of Hawaiian islands, right? So we sent me to Barcelona. And even though, yes, Jay, you are right, Barcelona is not anywhere close to being perfect. Spain is not. There's many things that are really screwed up politically, socially, but yet because or despite or the vice versa, they get stuff like that done. This is when we sent me out a few weeks ago to Barcelona to visit Joey and, and Lenny was, was with us here. These are social housing projects. These are solid timber projects. Behind me is a five story built out of massive timber. And at the top right, you have just been coming back from Japan. Jay, uh, you know this methodology where they char wood, they use a torch and they burn the surface of the wood. And you were talking about treating wood uh, to make it more durable. That is a traditional Japanese way how to do it. And this is just one of the many ways. So we have to take everyone out and with us and we go to Barcelona multiple times and show it in everyone's face here in Hawaii. And to say, yes, you can, you downers, you know, you doubters. And that's even, I, I have this even within my inner circles, to be honest, you know, that my family is often calling me a spinner, you know, my wife, my sweetheart, tropical exotic expert, Susanna says, you're a spinner. You're very familiar with a German language in several ways. I take it as a compliment, but maybe it's not meant like that. So we really got to fight hard to convince and to get the message across that there is hope for us in Hawaii. Uh, we're close to the, to the show time, but is there anything to add from your side before we say goodbye and see us in Barcelona next week, Jay? Um, I like Spain and I like Portugal. And I like oh. the creativity, the emergence of new ideas, new design. And the quality of the people in the civil society there uh, in both places. And looking at the wood that you have on the screen, it's beautiful. And I really don't know why we don't have more wood in Hawaii. But honestly, well, and um, my, my, I'm reminded of Williamsburg, Virginia. I'm reminded of brick. And I suppose we don't have that much brick because I, I guess it's because you you don't need um, uh, such a thick wall uh, in a tropical climate. Uh, but on the other hand, we we really like concrete. We like concrete everywhere. Um, and um, so I, I kind of like brick ahead of concrete. Uh, you can do aesthetic things with concrete, but you can do beautiful things with brick. And um, I, I would say that wood, like you're showing now, would be a great addition to new construction, but so would brick. Yeah. And again, the, uh, you know, we've been 20 years ago, we've been building that solid uh, timber school for mentally and physically disabled people, which we were called crazy. And our public German clients said, I think you need more treatment than our kids. You're crazy. You can't be serious. We were. It's still there. It works well. Some 10 years ago, we're, we built the office that I'm sitting in, that I'm reporting from now. But again, you know, um, we need more. We need to 
bring up more proof of evidence and you just charge us, Jay, you can read my mind. Uh, we're going to report from Portugal as well because I'm, okay, we take me there too. I'm going to travel, I promise, to Portugal again. And we're going to show the good stuff from there as well. You're absolutely right. These Southern uh, European cultures. And there was, uh, maybe we end on that note that um, if not the greatest, when we were doing the wrapping up show for the traditional format about architectural criticism, we were pointing out amongst others, uh, the probably most um, uh, esteemed architectural critic or one of the is Kenneth Frampton. And Kenneth Frampton once said, if there's hope for architecture, and this is now said for you and me, our cultures, it's not going to be within America or Germany or any of the, those are the supposedly developed cultures. It's going to be come from these small and hungry because more or less coming, having escaped and freed themselves from totalitarian regimes. These are the cultures that will be at the foreground of the future of architecture. And if you look at Chile, for example, if you look at Vietnam, which isn't totally freed, of course, right? Only sort of quasi, but different than in China, where it's highly suppressed, uh, the architectural community does not let itself be suppressed as much. There's really coming cool stuff. In Portugal, you know, it's been a while, but, you know, they've been that suppressed regime as well. And they are just like, you know, we were when you got us back on the feet in Germany again and helped us um, to do better and in mid-century, you know, able to do architecture again. But we were traumatized, rightly so. But these cultures, once they were freed, they were just saying, hey, now we want to rock the boat. So we really want to look into these cultures of course, Spain belongs to that as well. So we're going to go to Barcelona for that reason. And as it just suggested, we will do, we go to Portugal after that. Okay. So you guys on the island better watch out. No excuses anymore. Even less excuses than before. <laughs> See you in Barcelona next week. And I look forward to uh, the Soto show, Jay. Okay, great. I'm so happy that you're doing this, Martin, because I think it's really important that people understand that architecture is not, does not come from cargo cult. Architecture is, it should have indigenous elements to it, uh, and it should reflect the society in general. Uh, and the society in general means that people have to understand the possibilities, the possibilities of freedom to design, um, freedom to reflect the society, the culture. And government should not stand in the way. Government should encourage. Government should be, you know, in the same place. So that's part of the mission. It's not only to talk to architects and engineers. It's to talk to everybody. And I appreciate that you're doing this. We will. We will see amazing social housing next week in Barcelona. Get yourself, be surprised and be excited about it. So see you for that next week. And we should have Martine on the show for that because our Colombian Martine, right? The Oscar winner, because he is from that culture and he can speak Spanish and he's spent some time in Barcelona. So get him for that. And I also got um, a, a, um, a, an, an architect um, um, from Peru who I just met almost accidentally, but probably for good reason and he's also going to be with us um, as our experts in that field and joining us for that looking forward to that jay see you then and everyone bye bye <laughs>